Thank you, Ian, for carrying on our conversation with me today. In our previous discussion, we were talking about revival, the heart of revival, a little bit about its history. Basically, what it really boils down to is the manifestation of the presence of God. Mm. You know, the, the endorsement of God on somebody's life mm. that he would go, I'm going to put my presence around this person. I'm going to wrap my presence around your words, around your actions, around your heart. Mm. I will endorse you or endorse this move. Mm. For you in, in your life, how have you seen the presence of God moving? Because one of the things I love about it, not only does it enrich us, but it emboldens us yeah. with the power to change other people's lives. Yeah, the, the, there's just nothing like the presence of God. I, I, I'm an addict. My name is Ian Wright. <clears throat> and I love the presence of God. <laughs> and I haven't been sober for a long time. You know, it's just that, um, you know, people, sometimes when they talk about the presence, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't feel anything. You know, I, 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 I don't know that. But the promise of God is he's going to be with us. So he is with us. And the problem is that many times we just don't become aware. Um, we're aware of everything else. You know, we're aware of our fears, our intimidations, we're a fear, you know, fear of speaking, all of those kind of things. But, you know, we, we, we are, those are peak awarenesses, if you like, in that. But when you become aware of the presence of God, if I'm preaching, my, my goal always is to allow the presence of God uh, to have his way uh, in, that, in that congregation. Yeah. You know, what would be some of the language that you could put around that? You know, when you begin to sense the presence of God, mm. you know, and sometimes depending on the environment or the circumstances of what His presence is doing, mm. that can feel very different. Right. How do I pick that up? Um, it used to be more sensory. It, all right. It used to be more. Oh, I feel f funny. I, I feel like maybe there's pins and needles, or maybe I felt something on my neck, or or something like that. Um, and um, but I'm I, I'm very aware now, um, and and I think awareness is a great word for me. If I start being aware of what's God doing, the moment I did that, mm. even now talking to you, I become aware when I when I said that, I'm suddenly aware of of, of God's presence, and um, and now that may not affect you at this mm. stage, um, or the or the camera people or anything like that. It, it's just that I've become aware of His presence. You know, Jesus said, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so we, we interpret that saying, yeah, I'm going to love God, you know, with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, you know, I'm focused on loving God, you know, all that. But the word mind is the Greek word dianoa, which, which means imagination. Right. And so, you know, I will love the Lord your, my God with all of my heart and soul, imagination, and strength. And so now I'm legitimately able to use my innate imagination. What would it be like if I was walking along the road and God took my hand? And so I feel that, mm. you know, and, and, um, and people say, well, that's very new age. Well, yeah, it's also Bible. Mm. You know, new, new age is the counterfeit of so many things. And, um, and so um, even in Isaiah said it, you know, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And I, I love the fact that the awareness of his presence is, is, uh, is available to us all. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Told the children of Israel, my presence will never leave you. Jesus I said, I'm with you even to the end of the age. And, uh, and, uh, so, and he's given us the Holy Spirit. And of course, Paul writes in Colossians as well, the secret of the gospel. And I said this in the first episode, but the secret of the gospel is Christ in us. And in the New Living Translation, it says that. Colossians 1.27 says, this is the secret. Stop. Mm. You know, Jesus Christ is in you, or Christ is in you. And so, that, so if he is in us, what does it feel like to have Christ in us? Mm. Christ is the anointed one. He embodies all of that anointing that we think of. And, and then there's tangible anointings. I mean, we, we were talking about revival, but in Azusa Street, in a book called They Told Their Stories, Right, and um, and so the, these are the kids of Azusa Street. So these were little kids playing under the pews, if you like, in that old stable that the power of God fell on. And he said they would play in the anointing. Mm. And um, we'd go, what does that mean? He said, well, the anointing appeared as a mist, 
uh, in those meetings. So visibly for people, everybody recognised it, much has been written about it, including in the Los Angeles Times. And, uh, but the kids were yet told off for their parent, by their parents because they'd play hide and seek in the, in the anointing. I can't think of any better. Yeah, you, you said my time. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's right. <laughs> what are you doing now? I will hide yeah. in the presence of the Lord. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm quitting preaching right now. I want to get under the, yeah, under the yeah. pews with the kids. It'll be really helpful when you can feel a message tanking as well. Yeah. I'm just gonna... That's right. That's right. I'm just going to dive right in here. Yeah. You know? um, but the kids would try to put the anointing in their pocket, right? To take home. And um, so that's how tangible mm. those areas were. And so there has been, if you like, physiological manifestations of the power of God, the anointing, presence of God, you know, in, in different ways and in various seasons and all those kind of things. So if, you know, if you're sitting with somebody, like we've got somebody listening or viewing mm. at the moment, mm. no doubt, goes, man, that's great, become aware of the presence. Right. How? How do I start to become aware of something mm. I currently mm. can't sense or feel? Well, let's say you and I are walking down the road. Sure. We're not Jewish, you're a Gentile, I'm a Gentile. Mm -hmm. We're walking down the road and say, hey, Jared, you know, mm -hmm. uh, God's with us. And, and, you know, you and I would probably stop and really celebrate that. But mm. if we were just blokes, Kiwi blokes, walking down the road, hey, Jared, you know, God's with us. And we go, oh, okay, yeah, mm. sweet, sweet bro. Uh, you know, whatever floats your boat, you know, like, yeah. and... Uh, and you'd carry on walking and the other guy, yeah, and the other, you're going, hmm. Anyway, two Jewish guys walking down the, down the street or even um, a more of an Eastern mindset and you say to them, God's with us. And they'd look at each other and they'd stop. And in many cases, they, almighty God, they'd, the God of the universe, the God that made you and I mm. is with us right now. And they would, if you like, taste the moment. They uh, together. If God would come and He'd walk with us and He'd take our hand, what would that feel like? And um, and a lot of Westerners go, well, you're getting weird now, you know. Like, but if you were able to put your hand in God's hand, what would that feel like? What would His hand feel like? What would His strength be like? And and it's not exactly seeing the, you know, the 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 hand of God moving on us. And the, the, those are those are often illustrative, you know, kind of mm. uh, comments about God. And, um, but God is everywhere, he's breath, he's wind, and so he's uh, around us. So you can become aware mm. of your surroundings. I'm, I'm aware of you know, our setting right now, and I see things that the viewers won't be able to see, I'm aware of them, but I'm also aware uh, of where we are. And so that's in the physical nature of that. But I'm also aware that the presence of God is hovering around us at the moment. Mm. The moment that we, you start a conversation, and we're often aware Mm. that God leans in and, mm. and because he does that, his presence comes near to us. And I think it's really um, a sorry state of the church that we don't make ourselves aware of the presence of God. I think that when I go to prayer, I'm, I, and I, I'm, I, I just absolutely become aware, I become aware of, of the stillness around me, I become aware of his presence. Where is God in the room right now? Um, if God was in the room, where would he be? And generally you can locate that. Mm. I was actually told a story where someone had asked a, um, a, a well-known uh, television presenter who was an atheist, um, and uh, they were at a, uh, like a wedding reception and they were just standing around with some friends. And my, and my friend said um, they asked this person, um, uh, you know, where, where is God? He said, oh, I'm, I'm an atheist, you know. They said, oh, so where is God for you? And uh, he, he said, I said I was an atheist. And he said, yeah, no, I understand you're an atheist. So you, you don't believe in God. Yeah, okay. So um, if you did believe in him, where would he be? And the guy suddenly looked to his right and pointed. And at the same time, tears started to flow down his face. Well, because even though he was a stated atheist, he suddenly when put on the point, where would he be if he was real? Mm. He knew exactly where he would be. And, and so that may be some kind of pre-evangelism he was being witnessed to uh, at the time by another well-known Christian um, communicator. And, um, and so that, they, were, they were amazing um, 
incidences when you think of that. But I can remember people walking past the church. Uh, one guy walked past the church, he's on his way somewhere else at night, and he was literally drawn in. And as he was drawn in, there was demons coming up through the car park, um, just trying to stop him. And he was beating them off, you know, like all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was down the front and I saw this guy, um, he was darting around all the time. I thought, who? Yeah, well, you, you, you yeah. always get some strange people yeah, in church. Yeah. He was just trying to find his seat, but he was kind of dropping down behind people and, and kind of, you know, up the side and, and at the back. And, and, um, and then eventually we were praying for people and, and he comes down. And uh, he came up to, there's a friend of mine um, ministering with me, and he comes up and he goes, what's the deal with the hand? And we were going, pardon me? He said, the hand, you've got that big hand you had. How do you, do you do that like a hologram? Wow. And I went, what hand? What? He said, big hand, man, it's like everywhere I went, it just pointed at me, you know, like pointing. And it's just like, it just followed me around. And my friend was way quicker in those days than I was. Yeah. He just said, oh, that's the hand of God. He's got his finger on you right now. What are you going to do about that? You know, like, and the guy just gets led to the Lord. Wow. It's crazy. So, so, yeah, we couldn't see any of that. But God revealed himself in that way uh, to him. But not only that, there's something that drew him in. So what, what have you done then in your life? Because we're talking around at the moment, like a Sunday context. Mm which is the, the minimal part of our life. Sure, and, absolutely. And it's the, the presence of God around your life Monday to Saturday yep. that has been one of the biggest examples in my yep. life yep. around the pursuit of heaven, yep. the pursuit of the Father's presence. And in that, when we're talking about the presence of God, really what we're actually talking about is the heart of the Father. Right. What do you believe that, and then the actions that come out of that belief that have caused you to build such a awareness of him and a pursuit and addiction to him. So you put yourself in a place. Mm. You know, when when um, you know, the friends bought the crippled man and led him down through the roof, they wanted to drop him uh, to the healer. So mm. there was a healing anointing going on. They couldn't get anybody else in the house. And, uh, and yet Jesus, when he addressed, didn't address the man, he addressed the friends you know, who were looking down through the hole in the roof by that mm. stage, says, when he saw their faith, yeah. when he saw their faith, he said to the man, rise up and walk. And so, you know, what, what did they do? They heard that that healing anointing was in town, so they, so they went there. So being immersed in that, I got people to pray for me. But again, it's that being aware of his presence, aware what God is doing, what kind of meeting are you building? Are you building just an anointing meeting? Are you building it a, a meeting, uh, an evangelistic meeting? Then how do you build that in the spirit? How do you see that? How do you use your mind's eye, your imagination? You know, he will keep you in perfect peace whose imagination has stayed on him. So I'm gonna stay my imagination uh, around what God would want. Um, and, uh, you know, and I see myself laying hands on people. I see the power of God flowing through their life. And the anointing is, is tangible. Um, you can feel the anointing. Sometimes it's very powerful. Sometimes I minister in it and I don't feel a thing. Mm. Um, so if I, and, and that's good because that's where faith comes in and, you know, and I've prayed for people and they've felt it, but I mm. haven't felt a thing. Mm. And, uh, but I, I, I want to steward what God gives me in a, in a, in a great way. If you go back into some revival history, you know, there were, there were signs of the anointing. If you go back to, uh, Azusa street, for example, um, they, their neighbors called the fire brigade, uh, to that church many times. Uh, to put out the fire because the the roof was burning, right? But it was never burning, so the fire brigade just about got sick of turning up <laughs> because it's that place again, you mm. know. Um, and um, you know, so there's manifestations of things like Moses' burning bush. Mm. Uh, of course, God spoke out of that, um, and um, so there there are you know miracle manifestations. Fire came on the early church, um, and on the day of Pentecost, so there was a visible flame. Um, people saw all of that, and they were hiding in an upper room, mm. you know, and yes, it was a prayer meeting, but they were still hiding. Mm. They were being hunted. The temple guards and the, uh, the Romans knew uh, that there were some followers of Jesus still around, and the best place is just to eradicate them all. Mm. And they, they came out into the city square themselves and preached. And of course, you know, Peter's first message in Pentecost was, you know, 3,000 people got saved. Mm. Uh, they, they couldn't have got three saved the day before. Yeah. It was the presence of God, man. Your, your daily 
devotion. Mm. You know, mm. and I know it's something, you know, I pray without ceasing. And, mm. Mm. you know, you'd be like, Paul, we, I'd probably say, you know, mm. in praise and tongues more than anybody that I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I remember yeah. sitting in your living room, you go, what are we going to do? Well, let's pray in tongues for how long? Well, I don't know, at least half an hour. And after five minutes, I was like, so, oh, he's still going. Okay, he's still going. Let's do this. <laughs> you know? Um, so what I'd love to talk about is that that lifestyle of devotion mm. in one hand mm. and holiness mm. in the other, because it's all well and good. We go, I'm going to pursue the glory of God. Mm. But but the, the our vessel to be, mm. you know, of, of our lifestyle, mm. to be able to steward and hold that anointing. Mm. Um, you know, basically the wineskin needs mm. to be up to standard to be able to hold the pressure of the presence. Yeah, the vessel is very interesting. Um, you know, you, you you know that expression, of course, it's in the Bible. Um, you know, you need to put uh, new wine and new wineskins, you know, because you put it in the old, uh, it'll split and, you know, leak and all of those kind of things and you can't sew, sew something new onto an old garment, it'll tear off and all that. And so there is a renewing that goes on. Um, you know, Paul says you need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so we, we, we have concentrated, even in the West, of renewing a lot of, uh, of our mind. And we've educated ourselves well. We've got great theological colleges and seminaries and all those things. And that's great to have. And, and you know, I don't, I'm not dissing training at all. We need to be able to train. We need to be, learn how to do a decent hermeneutic to be able to have the tools to open up the Word of God and, and to do that. So I'm, I'm for that. But we've never trained people in the realm of the Spirit for example. And so apart from getting some books on devotional lives, you know, practicing the presence of God or our daily bread or uh, streams in the desert or something like that, you, you've got these devotionals that you go, oh yeah, and I need to pray as well. You really need to be mentored in prayer, I, I think a lot. And But the thing for me was that I was really grateful to have a, a great Christian upbringing. And I really encourage parents, you know, we can keep our kids entertained in church, but you know, when you begin to teach them the Word of God and practice that at home with them, um, and so um, so they don't see, hear one thing and see another. You know, so that's, you know, so they, they are, Henrietta Mears, the great Bible uh, Sunday school teacher from the States says, uh, children are God's little spies. And uh, so they, they learn from us mm. and we go, mm, wow, it's a heavy responsibility for all of us. So there is a, um, you know, a daily uh, sacrifice of doing that. The best person I know is my wife. I mean, she gets up early in the morning. You can always find her in her armchair in the lounge. Um, she's got um, a stack of books and an iPad and pads and she is diarying and she is journaling and she is seeking God. She's, she's amazing. And, uh, and I see that. I'm not wired that way. I'll take the dog for a walk and speak in tongues through the park. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be away on a long walk and I just speak in tongues. Uh, and then I'll read my Bible later in the day or the next day. Um, I keep a journal, but infrequently. Um, you know, I'll, I'll open it every week, but you know, I'm not down there dating things and putting things mm. in times and systematically. So I'm a bit more like that. I'm listening to worship. Um, if I have the house to myself, uh, which is my happy place, you mm. know, like, because um, it's the way I'm wired up. I, I, I refresh in isolation. Uh, love people, love being around people, love being with you guys today. It's really exciting. Um, but I'll probably just go and isolate this afternoon to catch my breath. So I think there is a, um, a deliberateness about yeah, having our one-on-one our -on -one connection, but we've got to have our, our neighbourhood group connection, mm -hmm. those close to us, family, uh, whānau. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just being in that group as well. And then uh, that goes out as well. But I've also um, deliberately um, put myself into people's ministries. Um, if you like, I've, I've, I've asked them, would you pray for me? There's, that's part of the apprentice model, mm. and, I, and I really like that. I, I work with Clark Taylor uh, enough to know what he is doing. Uh, he's a great explainer uh, of things. He's very methodical, and, um, and so I've learned a lot from sitting with him. I've sat with him and prayed with him, and uh, to, to see this, the way that he prayed and the way that he, what he was called, mused. Um, he... Um, he spoke out loud the imagination of seeing people born again, of seeing Australia come, uh, come into revival, 
to see the move of God sweeping across the city, uh, to see it touching the people of God, to see lame people walking. And, you know, by the time we'd done that for a, a few hours, you, you, could, you felt like you could walk on water. And I realized then I've got work to do myself and to just that systematic daily building in the spirit. Uh, so whatever you build in the spirit, this is what he taught me, whatever you build in the spirit, you can have in the natural. And I didn't believe him. Um, so we were having a, um, uh, a building project at the church, mm. right? And I was praying one day and I, I was walking through the park speaking in tongues, and uh, the Lord said, so if you build it in the spirit, you'll have it in the natural. I just felt that drop in the spirit. I went, mm. I, I don't quite know if I believe that, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a practice run, I'll see what happens. And so I built a bank check. Those were back in the days when we, we had still had bank checks. Mm. And uh, so bank checks were an anonymous check uh, from, a, from maybe a donor or somebody who wanted to pass the money on anonymously. Um, and they'd do that through a bank so you'd get a check mm. for the cash that you needed. And so you're imagining this. Right. Right. BNZ, colours of BNZ logo. The ra they used to have raised dots on, mm -hmm. a, on a computer dots. I, I could feel it under my fingers. So in my imagination, I'm not, I'm not in the park going like that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's like, mm, it's a, people ring, you know, one, 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 the weirdo in the park, you know. And so I, I'm, I'm imagining, I can feel the dots, I can see the check. And now what, what figure has it got? You know, and I thought, $50,000 is a lot of money. They're like, so I saw $50,000 like in that, in that computer writing, you know mm -hmm. how it used to come up and they'd put it across. And so I did that, oh, I did that for weeks. Yeah. It was great, it was weeks, months. And, um, and then, you know, you, and I, I could, you could just about feel the perforations down the side where they tore it out of their book, yeah. you know, just all that kind of stuff. I was in my office one day and my PA came into me and she said, we got a check. And I said, $50,000 BNZ. And she said, do you know about it? And I went, you've got to show it to me. And she showed it and that was exactly what I'd seen in the spirit. Wow. And I, I then I thought, why didn't I add another zero? Yeah. <laughs> so there's or two. <laughs> so there's, there's obviously a combination, as we begin to imagine with the mind of Christ, right. that, you know, as he leads us to imagine, as we step right. into that, that there is a, a partnership taking place yeah. in this imagining. Because right. if you... Uh, you know, I this one day it was my birthday, right? And I said, God, I would love a red Ferrari. And uh, Sunday morning, I'm in church, going, you know, because I'm thinking about this whole, you know, I'm imagining this red Ferrari, you know, whatever, you know, I'm just going, this would be great. Yeah. Man comes up to me at the end of church, no, no lie. Um, he says, Hey, I know it's your birthday, and you were on my mind when I got up this morning. I saw something, wanted to give it to you as a gift. He hands me this wee box wrapped up. I opened it up, and it was a model red Ferrari. <laughs> and I thought I should have been more specific, Way more with, specific. with scale, you know. <laughs> and I think for that, you know, it was God going, you know, I want to encourage you in your imagining, but it is not in my heart right. to give you that's a red right. Ferrari so you can wrap it around a power yeah, pole. Right. You that's know, right. so there's a part where he, he comes alongside us yeah, yeah, yeah. with the mind of Christ. I mean, even, even our interview today, even yeah. our conversation, I mean, we, we converse like this all the time. Yeah. And, um, but we've just got a camera with us today. Yeah. But you envisage this mm. you know you 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 go oh, why don't we do this you know why don't we have that conversation about revival the presence of god you know what th these are these are great topics to mm. talk about and so it had to begin somewhere that's right it had to begin somewhere yeah fantastic well, well we'll finish our conversation here and then we'll come back for the the next part where i'd love to dive into the supernatural realm a little bit more and talk about angels and demons oh let's do that absolutely come on awesome champion <laughs> I hope you experienced the love of Jesus as you watched this video. To see more great content, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and explore our website, fantailstudios.com.